Making an LED backlit sign is not a complicated process. Today I want to take you step by step and go through exactly how to build and make a sign such as this. And I think you're going to find that it's quite easy and it's really a lot of fun to be able to do. And the results, quite frankly, are amazing. To begin this project, I'm going to take a quarter inch piece of plywood. And I think it's actually five millimeter, but let's just say quarter inch. And I'm going to cut this about 30 inches by 24 inches to be able to make this sign. If you watch some of my recent videos where I've made some Christmas ornaments to put on the Christmas tree this year, the process is very similar. All I'm doing is being able to set this up on the CNC machine and I'm using one bit to be able to cut this out. To be able to cut out the Christmas ornaments, I used a 1 16th inch bit. To be able to cut it. Now as far as the bigger sign, well I stepped it up and I used an eighth inch bit. Now could I have even gone larger and used a quarter inch bit? Well certainly, but you will lose some of the detail. Remember this sign is 24 inches by 30 inches whereas the Christmas decorations are literally four inches in diameter. The next question that you may ask is, how do I hold this project down? Well, because there's so many little details and pieces that have to be held in place, and I do not use tabs, I'm using the glue and the tape method. But in addition to that, because of the size of the project, I'm using these little plastic 3D printed clamps that I put together, and they work extremely well. And I also use the bump stops, which was the old ones that I had used forever and ever. You notice looking up close at this cut, it is cutting very, very clean. So this means there's going to be very little sanding that's required to be able to get it ready for the paint. Because this sign is so big, I can actually start some of the cleanup while it's cutting out other sections by being able to take a pick and lift up these pieces that are already cut. That glue and tape really does hold it down well. But I can just pry it up, pop it out, and it does not get in the way of the machine doing its operation. The next question that you have is the software that I use. For the Christmas decorations, I showed you in detail how to do it with the easel software. Well, for this larger sign, I decided to use the VCar Pro and design this particular one. Now, quite frankly, the process is still very, very similar. Now that it's completed, the next step is to get it off of the machine and sand it. And it takes very little sanding to get this ready for the paint. Now that the sanding's done, let's take it outside and paint it. What I like to do is start with the back side. And I want to spray paint it white because that will help reflect the light. The light strips themselves will be glued to this panel. And by being able to have the white paint, it'll help reflect the light off of the uh, board onto the wall itself and create that obvious that you're trying to obtain. So white paint first, and this usually takes about two coats. Once the white is dry, it's time to switch over to the front side, and I'm starting off to be able to basically prep this wood, and I'm putting two coats of a primer black onto this front side. And I like to be able to do the edges first. There's a lot of edges that have to be painted black. And quite frankly, by painting the edges first, you're actually going to get the bulk of the surface uh, as well. Once this black primer is completely dry, I'm going to sand it really well because that is definitely going to raise the grain. And then I'm going to spray paint it black gloss. And quite frankly, at this point, it's really up to you. You can use the gloss paint or you can use the satin. But I would not use just a flat black primer. That's only for the undercoat. The black primer gives you a good seal. It seals the wood and it gives you a good foundation to be able to put the top coat on whatever you choose, either the satin or the gloss. In my case, I chose the gloss. As far as the LED lights, this is the package that I used. Now this is 32 feet, and this is a waterproof LED light strip. 
I did not need to use the FD waterproof, but I'm not 100% sure as to where he's going to put this. He may have it in his office. He may have it out on his patio. And I wanted to be able to make sure that the lights were going to be protected from any type of the elements. Now this is truly a peel and stick. You just take that protective strip, peel it back, and then you can just lay down the lights and just work them right into the area that you want. And this is a very easy process and that glue on these light strips really do have a strong holding power. So they work really, really well. Keep in mind, this is not a complicated process. Just by peeling this backing off of the glue surface, you just lay this strip down exactly where you want it and this glue does hold. Make sure you have it exactly where you want before pressing it down because once you press it down, it's pretty much there. So don't make this any harder than it needs to be because it is a very simple process. You do not need to have these light strips on every single letter. Not necessary. Primarily, you need it around the outside border. And of course, I want it on the border around the name. I will say this. These are not quite as flexible as the ones that are not waterproof. These waterproof strips with this plastic coating that's on top does make it where it's a little bit more difficult to be able to bend and actually shape exactly where you want it. But that's still not a big issue. As far as cutting these strips, there's specific places that shown exactly where you can cut it. And this is one such spot. And I'm going to cut it right there. As far as the 90 degree corners when you need to make a turn, well, it's not the traditional way that you're going to do the light strip. This is a little bit more challenging because of the waterproofing plastic that's on top of these LED strips. So literally, I make the turn and then I add a little bit of hot glue, put it in place, hold it for a few seconds until it uh, cools, and that will hold the corner exactly where it needs to be. So the next step is to connect these two strips. You have the copper areas right there where you made the cut. You peel back that plastic a little bit and then you can solder those wires in place to be able to join these two strips. It takes a little bit of practice and sharpen your soldering skills because that is a very small area, but it's very doable and it's not a difficult task. The first step is to take the solder gun and put a little bit of solder on each of these little copper strips. Once that's done, you'll do the same thing with the wire, is put a little bit of solder on the wire. There you can take each wire and just push it right down into the solder and you can make your joint. Now this wire, quite frankly, was too large, but it was the smallest wire that I had. So I literally had to shape it ahead of time and then Put the solder into the little strips. Now again, this was not a color-coded wire, so you still have to be very careful to make sure that all of them match. What I mean by that? Well, the first little strip is your 12 volts, and then you have your green, red, and your blue wire. Now because I didn't have but just the white wire, I still had to be very careful to make sure that the green went with the green, red to the red, blue to the blue, and of course your power for your 12 volts had to be correct. So that's the only word of caution that I'm going to give you on that. Now the final step that you need to do is be able to create some type of a standoff so that this actually will stand away from the wall. What I decided to do is to use a half inch dowel rod and I pre-painted the end of it so that I didn't have to paint those little individual pieces. I cut them one inch long, and that was plenty long to give me the distance that I wanted from the wall to the back of the sign. And that gives a nice distance for that light to be able to hit the wall and reflect off of it. I wanted to use a construction grade liquid nail to be able to hold these little one inch dowel rods in place. So I just put just a little bit onto the dowel rod itself and I had marked exactly where I wanted it to be placed so that it would be perfectly level. And I just pushed it in place. 
it's very important that these two on the top side are exactly level. Otherwise, the sign is going to hang crooked and you don't want that to happen. And I wanted a good, strong construction adhesive to be able to hold these in place. So with those two done and exactly where I want them, I'll move over to the other two to be able to glue those in place also. Funny thing about working on different projects like this, you never know what you're going to expect. The best laid plans, well, sometimes it doesn't work out. The construction of adhesive, that tube was empty. I had to switch over and use the good old fashioned white glue to be able to put these bottom two in place. But that's okay, this is gonna be plenty strong. The only thing that I needed to be able to do with using the white glue is to put a little bit of weight on them just to be able to support them until the glue dried. Now that brings me to the next challenge. How are you gonna hang it on the wall? Well, you have the standoff there, but you're not gonna put a screw through the front side of your sign all the way through that one inch dial. That is not gonna work. So what did I do? Well, I went back to the computer and went into Tinkercad to design these little clips right here that you can just screw onto the wall and then that half inch dial rod will just drop right down there in place. Now these took less than five minutes to build to design and how do they work? Well, this just snaps right in place and that's perfect. And that's gonna give me the support that I need to be able to hang this off the wall and keep that one inch spacing. So again, this took less than five minutes to design. Print out took about an hour to be able to print all four of these. And now this gift is completed. I'm ready to be able to package this up and deliver it. And I think this is gonna make a very nice Christmas gift. I'm not sure how I ever got along without having a 3D printer in the shop. To be able to design things like this just makes it so much easier. These little clips are gonna be perfect, I think, to be able to hold this LED sign off the wall. I'm not sure what other people use to be able to support the signs on the wall, but I think this is a fantastic solution to be able to hang my sign onto the wall and make it very easy to be able to hang up without having any type of excessive challenges. Oh, that is perfect. That clicks right in there. That is perfect. That will hold. So that will go right on there. Perfect. Snaps in place. It'll just screw onto the wall. So that is going to be a perfect design to be able to hold that onto the wall. So what does it look like when I turn the lights on on the back side? Well, that's what it looks like. So let's put this up against the wall and we'll take one more look at how this looks all finished. And of course, you can change the colors and make it any color that you want. I can't wait to see my son's reaction when he gets this as a Christmas gift. Now this original idea came from my grandkids. Three of my grandkids came to me and said they wanted to do a sign like this. And I said, that is a fantastic idea. So if you like this video, by all means, give me a thumbs up and don't forget, subscribe right down below. And I hope to see you in the next coming videos. But for now, Merry Christmas to everyone. Happy New Year. I look forward to seeing you real soon in the next video. So for now, bye-bye everyone.